In this video, you will learn how to avoid overfitting using regularization. There are two types of regularization techniques that is weight regularization and second is dropout. Overfitting is when the model performs better on training data but performs poor on test data or unseen data. Overfitting is a problem because a model which is overfit will not generalize well on the new data set or the unseen data. Now let's import the data set. So we are going to import the fashion MNIST data dataset from tensorflow.keras.dataset. And once we have this data set, now we are going to unpack this data set into two tuples. Our first tuple will have X train and Y train and the second one will have X test and Y test. In the second line or in the second cell you can see now we are printing the shape of our X train and Y train then X test and Y test. Shape of our training data set is 60,000 and the image size is 28 by 28 and in Y train we just have this number of samples here which is 60,000. In X test we have 10,000 samples image is 28 by 28 and in Y test we have this 10,000 samples. In the next line, what we are doing is we are importing matplotlib to display the data set or display the samples. Now here we are defining the figure size 10 by 10. Then we are running a for loop in the range of 25 and then we are creating subplots and each plot. So there will be total 25 images and there will be total 5 rows and 5 columns. In each column and each row there will be 5 images. And here we have given the CMAP is equal to binary because we are saying that these images are black and white. And if I scroll down, you will see we will have 25 images. So these are the images that you can see. We have boot, t-shirt, uh, then we have some uh, here also we have boot. These are sandals and these are some cloths. There are total 25 images. You will see we have this one, two, three and then four and five so we have each row has five images there are total 25 images we are displaying with the help of this matplotlib library now in the next uh, in the next cell what we are doing is we are processing the data set and we are converting our target variable that is label into a one hot encoded label and let's say if one of the category is uh, seven then the category which is present will be denoted by 1 and the other categories will be denoted by 0. So here you will see uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So at this index number 7 we have this number 1 because the label is 7 that is why the uh, here the number is 1 and the rest of the uh, numbers are 0. So if the label is let's say instead of 7 we have 5. So here we will have 1 and rest of the places we will have 5. Now to do this one hot encoding what we are doing is we are importing two underscore categorical function from tensorflow.keras.utils and we are applying this function on our white train and white test data set and then we are saving it to this original white train and white test. Then we are printing the shape of our Y train in Y test. So here you will see the shape is 60,000 and now the total number of classes are 10. So what you will see there is a difference. Now if I scroll up, here you will see the image size was 60,028 by 28. So we have converted this into 10 classes and therefore now instead of 28 by 28 we have this 10 here because there are total 10 labels and here also you will see in our Y test we have 10,000 samples and 10 classes. Now as a next step what we are doing is we are importing NumPy and we are reshaping this X train in X test and what we are doing is we are multiplying this 28 by 28 for this X train and X test and then we are saving this in this original variable x train and x test now if you look at the maximum uh, size or the maximum number that you will find 
in x train is 255 and the maximum number you will find in x test is 255 so now what we are doing is we are normalizing our training data set so to normalize it what we are doing is we are dividing all the samples in x train and it's in x test by the maximum number that is 255 so now all the numbers will be in a in a similar range so instead of having we we are having numbers in different range we will have all the numbers in one range now the next or the most important step is now regularization and drop dropout so we are going to apply this regularization and dropout technique to uh, to make sure that our model is not overfitting so what we are doing is first we are importing all the libraries that are needed first we are importing sequential to create sequential model then we are importing dense layer and dropout and for regularization we are importing l2 regularization we will create a simple function to train our model now we are going to use the dropout and regularization so let me tell you what is dropout dropout is a technique where randomly selected neurons are ignored during training they are dropped out randomly it prevents overfitting by ensuring that no units are codependent with one another dropout is easily implemented by randomly selecting nodes to be dropped out with a given probability example 20 percent or 50 percent in each weight update cycle, dropout is only used during the training of a model and not used when testing the model. And here we are creating a function and the function name is create underscore model. And here we are passing two parameters weight regularization and dropout regularization. These are the parameter. When we will set this true, then this function will uh, run with these parameters and when it is set false then this will be a very simple sequential model inside this we are defining the model we are importing this class or we are calling this class sequential and here we are using the if else statement so we are saying that if weight underscore regularization so here you are seeing that it is set to be false but here we are saying if it is set to be true then we have to add this dense layer activation function is going to be relu input shape is 784 and 784 because here you will see our input sizes our image size is 28 by 28 and if you do uh, if you multiply 7 uh, 28 by 28 so here you will see 28 into 28 is 784 and that is why here we are passing input shape as 784 and the regularization we are giving this value as 0.001 in the next layer we are adding uh, one more dense layer and here the activation function is relu and here the regularization is 0.001 and here we are not using the input shape because the output of this uh, layer would be the input to this layer so if it is true if weight underscore regularization is true then we will go to this if statement and we will add all these uh, parameters to our layer otherwise it will go to the else statement here and here it will just you know do the very simple uh, model creation so here we are just using the activation function uh, relu and input shape is 784 but here you will notice that we are using the regularization here so if it will go to this uh, if statement and it is set to be true then it will use the regularization otherwise it will not so this is for weight regularization and similarly we are doing for the dropout so if we are saying that if dropout regularization is true then we will add a dropout ratio so this is 0.2 which is 20 percent and as i said that in each weight update cycle dropout is uh, only used during the training of a model and not used uh, while testing the model so when we are setting it to uh, it 20 percent so uh, it will randomly select nodes uh, to be drop out with 20 percent probability and then we are defining the activation function here which is softmax and then we are compiling the model 
and if you are defining the loss loss is going to be categorical cross entropy optimizer is going to be adam and matrix is going to be accuracy a solution to this problem is to update the learning algorithm to encourage the network to keep the weights small this is called weight regularization and it can be used as a general technique to reduce overfitting of the training data set and improve the generalization of the model now in the next cell we are defining on functions show accuracy this function will show the accuracy for our training and validation data sets so it will take this history object and from this it will plot the accuracy for training and validation and in the next step in the next cell we are creating one function run underscore experiment this function will take some parameters so our first parameter is the number of times we want to uh, run our model so we have this uh, n e is equal to 20 then weight regularization is false dropout is equal to regularization is equal to false so initially we can set this as false and then we are calling this create underscore model function inside this function and then we are calling this is fit on the train and y10 data set and the epochs the, that is the number of times we want to run this more uh, this uh, trainer model and here we have you see that we have e is equal to 20 then the validation test and the verbose we are setting it as false so now what we are going to do is first we are going to run this uh, model without any regularization that is uh, without weight or dropout and when we run this function we call this function run underscore experiment this model will fit the data set and here you will see this model is has been fitted and here you will see the accuracy or the here you will see uh, we have this accuracy here 92 percent validation loss is 0 0.3 accuracy and you will notice that uh, initially the accuracy for both this training and validation they were very close to each other here they are very close but as the uh, model trained to different number of times the ac there was a difference in the accuracy for training and validation while the training accuracy increased the validation accuracy actually decreased here this is without any regularization and now let's see how it would perform with the help of regularization so here we are calling this one experiment and this time we are passing these two regularization weight underscore regularization is true drop underscore regularization is equal to true and now let's see the accuracy here so now you will notice that the both the training and validation accuracy they are close to each other so you will see both of these lines are actually very close to each other compared to the uh, one here so here we are seeing overfitting that is it is a uh, model is fitting well on the training data set but on the validation data set the accuracy is actually dropping after uh, you can say two or three epochs but when we are using this regularization that is weight and the dropout both the train and the validation accuracy are actually very close to each other and now let's say if so instead of using both the regularization you can only use one and here we are what we are doing is we are just using the weight regularization here so if i scroll down here now let's see here also the accuracy is close to each other not very close but they here also it is you know somehow close as compared to without regularization and then we are using this dropout regularization only here so we are passing this parameter drop underscore regularization is true and let's compare the accuracy here so here there is a difference so the accuracy is actually uh, far away from each other so what you can do is you can use both of these regularization when calling your model and with the help of these two regularization you will see a very good uh, training and the validation fit and uh, the accuracy so here both the accuracy are good so here the model is not overfitting but if you simply go without any regularization then there is a chance of overfitting where you are seeing that the accuracy is high on the training data set but it's less on the validation data set so this is the use of regularization that you can use to avoid overfitting i hope you enjoyed this video if you like my video you can subscribe to my channel thank you for watching